I want to thank you for jumping on the call with me today. Um, I really appreciate it. Why don't you kind of tell me a little bit about, about yourself and then we can kind of go into your journey and things of that nature. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I'm from a small town in central Pennsylvania called Milheim. Uh, I grew up 30, 30 or 35 minutes east of Penn State University. Uh, from, from the time I was a little kid old enough to watch football, I dreamed of the days that I would be able to, uh, to put the blue and white uniform on it and play for the Nittany Lions. Uh, my mom and dad used to take me up to the games when I was a little kid, and we did that on an annual basis. Uh, just the thrill and ex exhilaration of being able to sit in a stadium where 110,000 fans were there um, regardless of who you were playing as a fan was insane. So I really, really fell in love with that atmosphere really, really early on. I was fortunate enough to walk on. Uh, after I graduated high school, I was fortunate enough to walk on at Penn State in 2005. I played linebacker there and then ultimately earned a starting position my junior and senior year. When I earned that starting position, I got converted over to a full scholarship. Um, and then <clears throat> my aspirations, obviously, once I cracked the starting lineup at Penn State was to, to have a career that would extend into, into the National Football League. I was fortunate enough once again to get drafted in the seventh round uh, in 2009 by the St. Louis Rams. Uh, I spent three seasons in St. Louis with the Rams. I spent a season in D.C. with the Redskins. And then I got cut by the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New England Patriots the following season. Uh, getting cut by the Patriots stung a little bit because that was the year they won the Super Bowl. So. Oh. So it was really, really close to the ring, but just unfortunately couldn't hold on long enough up there. Yeah, well, uh, that's the Patriots for you, you know. They, I, I would say the reason they're so good is because they, uh, their business is so in line. You look at them compared to the Browns, and I feel like it's, it's the way they do the inner workings of the business that really has, has helped them achieve what they've achieved. Um, yeah, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, you, you, you hit the nail exactly on the head, and a lot of people, from the outside world and this fan perspective don't understand that football at the professional level is absolutely a business. Uh, that, was the, that was the most difficult professional atmosphere and environment that I've ever tried to perform in in my entire life. Uh, it was just because Belichick demanded so much of everybody in the organization from the players to the medical staff to the training staff, uh, et cetera. And then also every, it was the only organization and club that I was with in the NFL that literally measured everything. And it goes down to the old adage that you can't manage something without measuring it. So they had they had accelerometers on all of our weight equipment in the in the weight room that they were measuring the force and speed that we moved the bars. They measured caloric intake and we monitored how many hours a night we slept. We measured water intake. I mean it was every single thing you could possibly monitor. I was being measured and documented on a daily basis by knowing what was an interesting, uh, interesting structure. Yeah. And so would, what would you say your difficulties um, with the transition after sports? Did any of that stuff in the game kind of help you with the transition over? Um, I'm sure it absolutely did. The, the transition, the reason that my transition, Zach, was so difficult was it was because he just – let me try to think how to, how to answer this here. Um, I identified, so I identified myself as a professional athlete and a football player my entire career, probably starting from the time that I was 12 years old and started playing it in high school, the whole way up through high school, into college and into the pros. And the problem with that was, as long as I had football in my life and I was performing at a high level in the field, I felt a lot of worth um, internally and personally. So when football was ultimately taken away from me in the NFL, my identity was, was truly and literally stripped from me. I, didn't, uh, I had no idea um, who I was as a person for the first time in my life. Um, I always thought that I was a football player and I was very comfortable with that identity. Uh, football's taken away and I, I suddenly, who is Josh Hall? I didn't know that. Um, it's somebody that's not a, a professional athlete or maybe even a college athlete, that would seem kind of silly, but it was literally the only thing that I knew my entire life. Um, so that, that was really the starting point of my transition when I realized that I was more than a football player and there was more to the person, Josh Hall, than, than just what I did professionally. That slowly started to kind of propel me in the path forward to kind of let go of my past, be thankful for it, and be very gracious for the experiences I had, but also kind of let go of, of just being a football player and then trying to find myself professionally and personally after that. So how did you overcome some of those challenges? What, what kind of did you do to, 
help yourself, you know, get through that. Yeah, it's, um, this is going to sound odd again. Um, losing football is, I draw the analogy, it's very much like grieving a death. And obviously it's not, um, it's different, but it absolutely was a grieving period and a grieving process for me. So time, um, they say time heals everything. And day by day, it, it slowly became a little bit easier for me to transition. And thankfully, I have a, a really strong support system around me at home. I have an amazing wife, uh, my family, my wife's family. Um, I had all the really important people around me my entire life to help me through this transition. Um, but with that said, it still, it still was not easy, Zach. It was, it was about a year and a half to a two-year process until I finally saw the light at the end of the tunnel. And it came down to a conversation that my wife and I had uh, one evening around the dinner table. I was just really, really struggling on, uh, on what I wanted to do. Uh, my under, I should have said this probably earlier. My undergraduate degree was in engineering. So as soon, uh, as soon as I was done playing football, I jumped into the, no, I, I waited a year to try to get signed back on with the team. And then once that year passed, I jumped into the engineering world. Um, and it was, it was very, very difficult for me to find passion in that because I got my dream job at the age of 19 and I did it for five years. And now engineering, yeah, it's an end to me, but I wasn't super, super passionate about it. Uh, so that kind of tripped some things in my mind. And now we can fast forward to this conversation around the dinner table with my wife. She said, you know, you've always been super passionate about the business world and potentially owning your own business, but you don't really um, know the nuts and bolts. So why don't you consider going back to school, uh, getting your MBA? I'm like, I'm 20, at that point, I think I was 25 or 26 years old. I'm like, <laughs> go back to school again for two years. To start, I'm like, I don't really know if I want to do that. Um, ultimately made a decision to do that. And that was kind of when the aha moment went off in my mind that, uh, professional athletes absolutely make great candidates to be successful business owners because of the unique skill set characteristics that uh, we developed over our playing careers. Yeah, I've, I've, I've come to realize as, as I've come to go into this niche myself that sports and ath athletics are intermingled in some way, form, or another. There's always an intermingle of something, and I see a lot of players like yourself trying to do something that they're they're common with um and then kind of using that to their advantage as as their passion as they kind of move forward with uh trying to grow something that they're passionate about so why don't you tell everyone what you're kind of doing right now yeah so <clears throat> i alluded to earlier about going back to school to get my mba um, i did that at penn state uh during that process I met a gentleman by me who was in the same cohort as me uh, and about halfway through he and I started bouncing these ideas off of, of one another uh, and a whole concept of how do we kind of tie my passion for the sports world with David and I's newly found business acumen and we toiled with that idea and just kind of massaged it and went back and forth and then after we graduated we really sunk our teeth in with further developing that and <clears throat> the end of the graduation what came of it David and I uh, co-founded Contend Consulting, and we help professional athletes become successful business owners. Uh, and what that, our services within that title, they take three different shapes. Uh, it's business development, business redevelopment, and then opportunity evaluation. And I can go into those if, uh, if you want me to in a little bit greater detail if you'd like. Yeah, why don't you, and that kind of goes into the next question on uh, what makes athletes great business owners, because I think that's one of the reasons you probably came up with was some of these these steps. So why don't you tell everyone these steps and how it works with with athletes? Yeah. So let me. I guess I'll answer the, the late latter portion of that question first. Some of my opinion of why I think professional athletes make such good candidates to be business owners. Uh, the one thing and these are in no particular order. Um, our ability to work and handle and stress um, is is incredible. I mean, the environment that we performed in, there's a high, there's a very high bar on expectations. There's a lot of volume of work that needs to be accomplished in a single day. And that tailors exactly into what we did on a day-to-day -day basis as a professional athlete. Um, the bar was set really high. It were long work hours. Uh, we literally, and in the game setting, I mean, you force yourself to work through fatigue. Uh, and to kind of build on that and compound a little bit farther, we're also very adept at making split decision, act, split second accurate decisions based on a pile of information that is presented to us at one time. So for me personally, 
of being an inside linebacker and being the captain of the defense, you need to be able to, first of all, take the call in. You need to get the guys in front of you lined up so that the front, or the front is lined up appropriately. You need to know what the linebacker is doing, and you also need to know what coverage is taking place behind you. So all this is dictated on down and distance, on field locate, where the ball's at on the field, the formations that the offenses are presenting. So literally this has to happen in a second or two. So we're simulating all this information. You need to make a decision and boom. Uh, if you kind of flip over into the business world, it's no different. Uh, when you're making strategic decisions, there's competitors all over the place. There's a pile of information that is linked somehow, but on the surface, it's very difficult to see that. So as you work through it and massage it, you can slowly begin to put piece by piece by piece together. So I think the, the ability to assimilate and make sense of a lot of chaotic information and noise and dumb that down into one or two strategic objectives is something that athletes are very well at doing. Um, also communication, uh, leadership, uh, the, the generic, you know, tangibles that, that are often brought, brought up in this discussion are also very, very applicable in the business world. Um, it's professional. In, in my playing football, particularly, some of the environments that you're forced to communicate in, you literally can't hear. So you're using hand signals, you're using all kinds of ancillary means to, to communicate rather than verbal. And I think, although this might seem like a stretch to a lot of people, in the corporate and business world, it's more than just picking a phone up and calling somebody. There's also a bunch of different formats and mediums that you can be forced to communicate through. So having a little bit of a, of a comfort level with that doing in the past also helps. Leadership characteristics, skills, um, that kind of speaks for itself. I don't really need to go into detail with that, I don't think. Um, I'm trying to think another good analogy too. As professional athletes, you're basically the CEO of your body. Um, if your body's not working for you, you're not making money. And you also have the ability to control what goes into your body and what, what you put in your body controls the output and your performance. So if you correlate your business to your body, I think there's a lot of crossovers of actually having a bona fide business that is not you as a person. Yeah, I, I, I can uh, somewhat relate to that being a business owner myself uh, because I feel like when you're, you guys are on the field, you have, a, you have other teammates. You, you guys are working as a team. And I think that goes into the next question on there's great opportunity there, but there's also some struggles that athletes probably come about with when it comes to um, owning a business. And I think a lot of that has to do with they're so used to, you're so used to working as a team and having, having teams tell you what to do and them running a business that when you come out on your own at first, a lot of times you feel like you have to do everything yourself. And I feel like that's, I, I, I see a lot of athletes trying to do too much on their own and trying to get them to understand, hey, just like on the field and working as a team, you should develop a team off the field. Is, is that something you feel like athletes struggle with? Or what do you feel like are some of the struggles? Yeah, that's, that's a great, a really good point that you bring up, Zach. There's a reason on a football field on both sides that there's 11 players. It's because each person has a, a specific task and an objective to accomplish on every plane. That's no different uh, in the business world. It's important to have you act as a CEO, you have the CEO, the CFO, the guys that control IT. And then underneath them, obviously, it's a tree that spreads out that they all have people to help them as well. Um, that is something that I, you're, you are 100% correct. I feel like uh, I'm a really type A personality. Probably some of that comes from, from my past profession, but I oftentimes feel that I need to be in control of everything and um, what better way to control stuff than, than to give all the responsibility to me? So that's something that, that I fight uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and becoming comfortable and, and finding that support team and, and your teammates beside you, you can literally, you can really trust in the business world just like you did on, on the playing field. Um, I think one of the, you asked another difficulty or some of the things that these athletes might face kind of ties into this same realm is as a, as a player in the NFL, you're so used on the day-to-day -day business or on the day-to-day, -day, <clears throat> you're so used to having somebody tell you what to do. So when I played for the Rams, for instance, they told me where I needed to be. They told me what time I needed to be there. They told me what I needed to bring at that meeting. Um, it was literally, here's, here's an agenda. All I had to do was follow it. Um, as a business owner, you don't have those people telling you what to do in every arm of your business. So there's a little bit of a disconnect and that can be a growing pain for some people. I think I've done a pretty good job in managing that. Uh, David, my business partner, um, is really, really good 
at kind of uh, outlining. Uh, he, he has a very cool thing down segment by segment by segment. So he's kind of my coach uh, on a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff that he and I work collaboratively. Yeah, I think in, in, as a business owner in general, I think there's so many little things that add up to big things that you don't actually see a paycheck from. It's not like going in right. and having someone tell you what to do. I, I, I feel like for me, for instance, there's a lot of those little things that I have to do my, I do have to do myself, but it doesn't necessarily add up to, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to make a hundred bucks. I'm going to do this and make 200 bucks. It's knowing that it's growing your business and in the long run, it's going to do it. So that really, from a business perspective, that, that is a struggle because you're like, oh, well, I'm not going to see the fruits of this labor for a long time. So I do it, you know? So right. I can definitely see that being an even bigger struggle for athletes with that situation. So what are some, uh, what are some things athletes can learn you think in regards to building their brand uh, brands from other business owners out there that that own businesses? I think tailoring with the same theme that we've been on here for the last couple of minutes, one of the things that they can learn and they absolutely need to learn is building a strong circle of influence, a strong support staff and a strong team to support their day to day. Um, they need to, they, and I am included in, in the term they, uh, we really need to understand that you can't, <laughs> you literally can't do everything that you need to do. So it behooves you to find people that you can really trust, um, to do the, you give them an objective and set them off on it and they can accomplish it with, with very little oversight. It's important to have that team of, of four, five, six, seven, however many people is around you that can really, really lean on when you need to. Let the experts do what they do best. Let you own the business and let Exactly. Them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's a, a, an even pain point even with working with not just athletes, but other companies in general is, is they don't, they try to do a lot of things themselves, not realizing people go to school and get MBAs in business or they go to school for design or development or any sort of digital marketing or, or anything and they're, they're the expert at it. So leverage that and pay them accordingly for that and let them help you build your, your business as long as you trust them, of course. So why don't you now dive into, I think we kind of we skipped it, why don't you dive into some of those, those uh, things that you do, the, the three steps that you kind of do when you help uh, athletes grow their business? Yeah, most certainly. I want to say one thing here before I dive into that. Um, one kind of a cliche or soundbite, if you want to call it, um, that has been told to me several times. I didn't initially understand it at first, but now it makes a lot of sense to me. We need to, as professional athletes making the transition into the business world, you need to know what you know, and you also need to know what you don't know. And the things, <laughs> understanding and knowing what you don't know, that's the niche where you need to bring support staff in and people and teammates to fill that niche um, and that void that you don't necessarily have the ability, uh, skill, comprehension, et cetera, to, to success. That's, a, that's, that's kind of rung in my mind on, on some several players that I have come in contact with that have made successes in the entrepreneurial world after that. So that's one of the big things that helped them transition. Yeah, I've noticed it. I, I've noticed it myself as a, as, a, as a business owner. Before I bring on a service that I'm going to provide to clients and I hire an employee for it, I try my best to take six months to a year to understand that enough where I'm not, you know, a hundred percent great at it, but I know enough that I can yeah. hire someone to do it and to do it correctly. You know what I mean? Um, Absolutely. So I definitely yeah. think that that's, that's, that's some good advice. So how can, how can you, uh, how do you think with that said to help athletes, how can you help athletes move forward? Any advice on helping athletes move forward? Yeah. So, yep, I will, I'll dig into a little bit to the three arms of our, our service arms that, that fall under our umbrella. The first one is the business development realm. Mm -hmm. And within that realm, we take the hands of our athletes and we walk through every single process that is involved from with turning an idea or concept or process into an actual bona fide operating business. So what that looks like, it's, it's formal business plan creation. Uh, within that formal business plan creation, that's helping them walk through their vision their mission, um, <clears throat> branding, which is something that we don't personally do, but that's why we have people like Zach on our staff to help with that. Um, in that formal business plan, it's, uh, it's client acquisition, it's understanding markets, it's creating sh costing strategies, a uh, supply chain. So literally any possible thing that you can think of to take your idea and turn it into a business is what falls into that formal, band, formal business plan creation. Um, on the business redevelopment side, that is tailored specifically towards athletes who already own a business, but 
are struggling with one a certain aspect of it, whether it's uh, their bottom line not being big enough, their top line not being big enough. Uh, it could be a market that they're interested in penetrating, but they don't necessarily know how to get there. Uh, we'll work with the athlete, and David and I go in and conduct a complete strategic shakedown, and then we use we we offer justified uh, recommendations on how to improve their status quo. Um, the third arm is the opportunity evaluation, and that's David and I created a proprietary system that's called the True Match system. And under that system, we create a client profile based on X number of parameters from the player themselves. And then we're using a logarithm to cross correlate that with an investment profile. And what our logarithm does, it tells us how good or how poor of an investment fit um, the investment is for the, for the athlete and him or herself. And if it's a, a great fit, we'll work with them to put all their ducks in a line and get them in a row to move forward. And if it's a poor fit and they're still interested in it, We'll work with them to one, understand why it's a poor fit, and then two, come up with a, a strategy to mitigate some of the shortcomings of the investment opportunity to, to further kick it down the line to see if we can turn it into something that does make sense for them. Nice. And I think that somewhat relates. It's funny how business and marketing somewhat relate a little bit because from a marketing perspective, I, that stuff works for me because it helps me with the client say, hey, who are we going to target from a paid side? Are we going to start locally? Are we going to grow? organically first what is the best direction to go when it comes to building their online presence and how to leverage those followings they have on the field and kind of help turn those fans and the customers past the fact so overall that sounds awesome uh i think that true match system really sounds interesting i can't wait to see more in it as uh some of you may not know yet we're planning a partnership here so you will be able to find josh hall's website and his contact information eventually here in the next couple of weeks on my website if you're interested so why don't you tell people where they can find you as well? Yeah, perfect. Um, LinkedIn is the best place to reach my personal profile. And it's just Josh Hall in there. Content Consulting also has a page, um, but it's not as robust as my personal page. And then our website URL to Content Consulting is www.thecontendteam.com. And Contend is spelled C O N. T E N D. Well, great. Well, I really appreciate you having, having, uh, being on the podcast. Uh, I look forward for us to work a little bit more in the future together as well. If there's any last words you can tell to either athletes or fans, what would that be? Oh man. Um, I, know, I kind of, I think that on that the message. Of, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Um, I think the message that I want to make sure that professional athletes and, and even more than professional athletes, high school athletes and college athletes understand that at the end of the day, you most certainly are more than just what you do for a living or what you've done as leisure. So you're more than an athlete, you're more than what your sport is. And unfortunately, I didn't understand that until after my playing days were over. So I think the transition could have been, I could have made that transition a little bit easier for myself had I realized that there was more to Josh Hall than just a football player when my career ended. Yeah, that's sense of advice. Uh, it's always great to hear it from another, a, a, an actual professional athlete. So again, thanks for, thanks for being on and um, a lot more to come in the future. So thanks again. Yeah, thanks, Zach. I appreciate right, it. You have a good one.